Have um have either of you created a Power App uh, yet? Julian, I think I you I remember you saying you played with, started playing with it a little bit. Yeah, um, I've I've been playing with it for about two years actually. Maybe. Okay. I, I can't get past the playing phase though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. I um, kind of, I, I was kind yep. of hoping someone might have got past that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting there. Um, ben and I uh, did a little presentation on it at the MVP conference, and then um, mm -hmm. we wrote, um, just got done writing a little white paper on it as well. So um, mm -hmm. we'll, that'll be published pretty soon. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I was telling Jack I was listening to a, an online um, uh, kind of webinar that was actually recorded yesterday about another MVP who's also a Microsoft RD member as well, who built this thing for a Microsoft conference with it. And um, I, I wasn't all that impressed, I must admit. It just looked pretty much like, you know, the automatically generated app tarted up a little bit. Gotcha. And I don't think they look great. Yeah, um, I, I know they certainly have a ways to go. It's more uh, functional than it is pretty, for sure. Yeah, and I've, I mean, I, I started out trying to build a, a power app for a tablet, uh, you know, tablet type size, and I thought, okay, I'm going to try this from scratch, and I just rather than because there are I don't think there are any tools to build to, to, to create them automatically really yet um, right it, it's it just wasn't um, wasn't an enjoyable experience yeah I hear you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it certainly is getting better um, like one of the things when I first used it when you did a search on uh, um, uh, you know on, on that search or find a page it would only search the one field um, yep. and uh, with access web apps obviously it searches every field you know when when you're in the um, navigation window and so it, it searches everything in it well now power apps searches all fields on that screen um, not necessarily all the all the fields in the in the record itself but but at yep. least it searches everything on that screen so um, it's good, and that's one of the things that we had we had brought up to them. Um, ben and I had brought up to them a while ago, and so it's it's good to hear that see that they're listening to to uh, what we have to say. Oh, 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 they're definitely listening. I mean, I had a call. Uh, well, it was via Mikal originally. Yeah. To talk to a researcher. She was she was a uh, she was an intern actually with the team about the CDM part of the product and okay I had a long conversation with them about that and then also I've had quite long conversations with them about flow as well which I am impressed with actually I think flow looks amazing yeah um, so I think I think there there's there's some promise here and there yeah I think I think so too well I um, flow is the big big one yeah and uh, you know what I really like is um, that when uh, connections are built for Power BI that they're, you know, um, usually Power Apps is, you know, uh, a little bit down the road, to, but at least they're on the horizon uh, to connect. Mm -hmm. So um, that's mm -hmm. definitely a plus. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully, uh, John will be able to join us. Otherwise. Uh, you know, he'll um, he can catch up with watching the video because uh, we're already 15 minutes into it. So I apologize for getting started late um, on this. So uh, for for people that are um, joining us for the first time, I'm just going to um, show this screen. And so this is um, accessusergroups.org/powerapps, um, and this is where you can register for the Power Apps group. Um, I know Jack mentioned that uh, uh, he actually had to go to the main site, log in there, and then register for the uh, Power Apps group after that uh, because he was already registered for the Access um, Web Apps group. 
right? So, um, so people can uh, can um, sign on when you're ready. We uh, we are recording all of all of these, so the videos will be posted under the video section, uh, so you'll be able to see those as well. But I've been I, I'm I'm really excited about starting this group. Um, I'm it, this is one of those situations where I I, I probably you know. Um, with, with people that have experience with power apps, different people have different experience, and I and I think I may have just one step ahead of people. Um, I don't know if that qualifies me for for actually running this group, but um, I, I will. I'll I'll be learning at the same time you guys are learning. So uh, I'm sure I'll be stumbling over some stuff, and I, I certainly don't have all the all the answers. But that's one of the the great things about. Um, you know these kind of things is we, we're kind of all learning learning from each other so with uh, to, to get started I just want to kind of describe power apps so in in the state that power apps is today um, I feel that the primary use of power apps is just extending your existing corporate data to mobile devices it's not creating um, power apps that is self-contained and it's its own app I don't feel that that's the the biggest um, uh, pain, you know pain point initially I think the best that way place to start is if you have an existing um, spreadsheet in Excel or SharePoint or Azure or something in Salesforce or MailChimp or something um, and you've already got that data there go ahead and you know, uh, start with ex extending that to your your mobile uh, phones, because um, that I think that that's where you know you'll you'll get the biggest impact to begin with. The um, Power Apps is, allows you to connect to dozens of data sources. So, um, like I mentioned, Excel, SharePoint, SQL, Azure. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, Facebook, uh, Bitly. Uh, just just tons and tons of stuff the uh, power apps works on an iPhone and Android and Windows phones um, iPhone Android Windows phones as well as all the tablets iPads Android tablets you know Samsung um, tab and all those kind of things so it works natively in those environments as opposed to an access web app that works inside of a browser window um, the um, and I, actually, let me do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pop up an uh, app real quick. Let me um, and then pop it into an in emulator mode. Hold on, just a second. And so, for people that have not seen what it looks like, uh, this is what a Power App looks like in emulation mode. Um, I'm in Windows right now, but this is kind of generically what it looks like. Um, this is just a customer database. Um, this is one of my uh, customers. It's called Air Liquid Ghana. Um, they're, they're based in um, um, Accra, uh, Ghana, uh, um, Africa, West Africa. Um, and so this is, this is an app that I started building for them. Um, and I, uh, I, um, I actually built. It's actually um, an Access web app that I started for them, and then I, I took that and turned it into um, a, a very, very simple power app, just to kind of show people what you can do with it. All the data in here is fake, um, but these are the. You know, it kind of gives you an idea of, of what it looks like. Um, you've got the ability to kind of drill down, so I can click on this to drill into a single customer. I can edit it, um, and it will take me into edit mode. I can save it. I can go back to the main screen, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's just generically what what an Access Web App look, looks like. People have asked me, okay, so is Access Web Apps going away, and is this a replacement for Access Web App? I I don't see Power Apps as a replacement for Access Web Apps, um, at least the way it's it is today. They you know both Access Web Apps and Power Apps have some strong uh, you know strengths and weaknesses, um, and um, you know I I. Um, like I said, I wrote a white paper, and so that'll be released. You can read more about the reasoning behind that. I'm not going to get into that right now. 
but so let's go we're going to go ahead and get started i want to i want to start this session again this is the first one so i want to take people through um adding a connection to data and showing people how um you know the you know what kind of data you can connect to and that kind of stuff we're going to add a connection uh, in this case we'll use sharepoint but you can do excel and things um, after we create a connection we're going to add a new um, app from scratch um, i'm going to give people a, a a tour of the interface so they can get a feel for that um, i'll be talking about the uh, different types of uh, screens um, that are that are in here and we'll you know, we'll, we'll jump into some other things. We'll see how, how much time we have um, at that point. But I want to plow, I'm going to plow right in here. Um, and so uh, this is the main Power Apps screen. Uh, the first thing that we do is we set up connections. And so um, under connections, this gives you the ability, and these are stored connections I have. Um, but I'm, what we need to do here is just create, um, click on new connection. And then within here, you've got all of the different data types that you can connect to. Um, so you've got everything from um, uh, Campfire, um, Basecamp, um, Dropbox, Dynamics, 365, uh, Facebook, GitHub, uh, Google Sheets. Um, here's our MailChimp, OneDrive, Outlook, OneNote, Power BI. So there's 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 dozens and dozens of these. SurveyMonkey, Twitter. So there's a lot of these these different data types, um, uh, the data uh, sources that you can pull from. Now if I scroll up, you know I can say, okay, well if I want to connect to Excel, where is it? Um, there's no Excel here. And if I go down to um, Microsoft Office to see if they call that Microsoft 365 Excel or Microsoft Excel or something like that, it's not there. Um, and so where is it? Well, the, the reason it's not there is because generally you'll store that Excel document in, in a folder somewhere. That folder could be Dropbox. It could be OneDrive, it could be Google Drive, it could be any um, a box, it could be box itself, it could be any of those. And so when you're connecting to an Excel document, first you need to connect to like OneDrive, and then within OneDrive you're going to find the sheet of Excel. Um, now in our in our sample, we're not going to use Excel. We're actually going to use SharePoint, um, and uh, uh, just so. That, that's what I like to use for, for demos. So we're going to use SharePoint. Um, but one thing, one tricky thing that I figured out with Excel is if you just store a, um, a sheet of Excel and you try and connect to it through Dropbox or something, it will say that there's no table created. And what you need to do in Excel is um, you can, in fact, let me, let me pull up one. Let me pull up Excel real quick. Okay, so here's Excel. This is um, uh, uh, this, this is actually all Alexa skills. Um, I'm I've uh, written four um, skills. They they call them skills, not apps, for the Amazon Echo device. Um, and so this is a listing. Uh, from a year or more ago of all the all the Alexa skills at that time um, but what you need to do in here is this needs to be formatted as a table and if and just for kicks I'm just gonna highlight these up here it says format as a table and then you choose that in an Excel document you have to format it as a table in order for it to be read into Power Apps. So I just wanted to point that out in case you, you want to test it with Excel first and you're like, well, you know, where is, um, why can't I do this with Excel? And so that's a, um, that's how you get past that. Um, so in here, we've got SharePoint. We can connect to SharePoint. Um, we can connect directly. In this case, it's SharePoint in the cloud. I'm going to go ahead and create that. 
And then I'm going to use, in this case, you'll see it's IT Impact. My company is WorkSmart Database Masters, so you would normally see Andy at WorkSmartDB.com. Um, IT Impact is uh, Juan Soto's company. Juan Soto started the Access User Groups um, dot org uh, sessions, um, and uh, and so that's um, so he, I've actually got a, um, a login under under his world, and so basically I can I can connect to the, I've already got one connected, uh, I've already got one created, but basically you go into here, you put in your um, credentials, and, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go um, back here. I'm going to go back into connections, and so you'll see here I've got. Yeah, here's the SharePoint um, one that I just attempted um, to do, but I've already got one. Whoops, but I've already got one created. So I'm gonna kind of um, I should be able to delete. Hmm, that's weird. Um, I, I I must have to finish creating it before I can delete it. But um, since I've already got this one created, I did. I, did, I we'll we'll just use this. So um, so after you create the connection to whatever your data source is, and I do recommend doing that to begin with. Um, you the, you can click on new app and then create your connection as you go. I prefer to have the connections already there, um, and that way I'm not having to go back and you know figure that stuff out. But so in here, I'm going to click on uh, new app. I can use Power App Studio for Windows or Power App Studio for Web. In this case, I'm running at, this machine happens to be a Windows 7 machine. So, uh, with in order for Power App Studio for Windows to work, you have to be most people are on 10 to use it, but I believe it'll work in 8.1 as well. Um, so, in in my case, I'm going to use Power App Studio for Web. And so now it takes us here. Um, and so we can start with your data. Now these are common ones that people use. In our case, we don't want to use these. We're actually going to use connections that we've already set up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the arrow. It'll take me to my connections. I'm going to choose ATABIS at IT Impact. You have to know the URL that you're working with. Um, it, um, in this case, it's a URL on um, uh, IT Impact site again, um, and you can see it's called AWA 2PA, and it's basically we were taking an Access Web a Web App and trying to recreate it in in PA in Power Apps. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. At that point, it shows you all the different SharePoint lists that are available. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose Customer. That's a simple one, and at the bottom right, I'm going to choose Connect. And so it's going to go out and build your app uh, for you. And what it does is it, it builds three screens for you. One is a kind of a search screen where you're seeing like all of your customers. Um, the second one is a view only screen. And then the last one is an edit screen. Um, is everyone following OK? Just fine. All right, sounds good. And it looks, um, yeah, John was able to join us. Great. I'm glad to see you, John. Looks like Daniel joined us as well. Good. So um, I'm glad you guys were able to uh, uh, participate as well. So the first time you you go into here, it shows you this little. It'll show you uh, just some some pieces of it. I mean, I'll go ahead and it's like five slides. Or right, um, so first, it shows you your screen thumbnails so this is kind of a, a preview of what those thumbnails uh, look like um, and these are the different screens again um, at uh, this middle section is your design workspace that's what you'll be working with next it shows you your property drop down menu so you've got fill and things like that um, and then finally it's showing your, your formula bar up here. This is your formula bar. Um, what it doesn't show you on, on um, the right-hand side here, we have your options. And so you've got options for your layout. Um, and then you also have 
um, your your advanced portion, which are your actions. And then down at the bottom, at, at the bottom here, you can see data sources. And so this shows you what you are connected to um, at that time. So the, it's just a, just a really simple um, uh, tour tour of the interface. Um, as I mentioned, there's three three types of screens. I'm going to go right now on this first one. Um, let's uh, blow this up a little bit bigger. So this is, uh, again, we connected to the customer table um, of this uh, Ghana, Ghana database. And you'll see it, um, the, the Power App, when it creates it, it tries to figure out what is the best rep, uh, representative for how this should be laid out. So it's taking guesses on the kind of layout that you want, the kind of data you're looking at. Um, and it's, it's pretty decent, although um, uh, there are some times that it's completely shown me uh, the wrong fields at all, you know, that I want to see. And so you've got to uh, adjust these things. Um, but in here, you, uh, you've got just your title, you've got a refresh, you've got your sort order, ascending, descending. You can um, add uh, customers. You've got the ability to search for items. And then you've got some detail. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, at the top right, there's a little arrow here that says preview the app. If You, you can hit F5 on your keyboard. I'm just going to click on this. Um, and so here we are back in the, the Power App um, itself again. And this is, now we're in an emulator that allows us to click on the buttons. And so in here, if, uh, for search items, if I wanted to search for, like, um, uh, Tamale, uh, I know it looks like Tamale but uh, it's, it's, it's Tamale. Um, and so I, if I type in TAM, it'll automatically filter that. If I type in um, Accra, it'll filter that. Um, if I just start typing customer, as I, as I type in letters, it's going ahead and filtering it. I'll start typing in Bolga, Bolga Tanga. Um, that's, the, um, <laughs> that's the northern part of, of Ghana. Um, and when I was, uh, I, I visited Ghana about four years ago, and um, directly above Bolga is the, um, uh, a, a crocodile pit. Uh, it's a famous crocodile pit there. And so um, somewhere I've got a picture of me sitting on a live crocodile. Um, and people are like, weren't you scared? And I said, well, you know, I've been through a divorce, so it wasn't, it was much easier than going through my, my divorce. Um, and I figure, you know, as, as long as I can outrun, because you're kind of surrounded by other people, because uh, they're all kind of watching. And so I figure as long as I can outrun one of them, I'll, I'll be in pretty good shape. So, um, so, so sorry, sorry, I digress. But um, so, so we've got the ability to search. We can see the, some different fields here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this right arrow. And so we've got our address line. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. That's weird. It looked like I dropped off. Um, did when um, at least the voice I were you did did you hear me go through these fields? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to take you back. Did did I did, were you able to see this part? Yes. Okay. All right, cool. Thank, thanks, Jack. Um, and so, so this is the emulator. Um, you've got the ability to, like I said, ability to search. So I can type in like Volga, um, and it'll show us that. It'll automatically filter. Um, when I first got introduced to Power Apps, it only allowed you to search for one field on this form. Um, and since that time, it allow, now allows you to search for any fields on this form, um, whether they are, uh, uh, it, but, but it doesn't, un, um, 
unlike Access Web Apps, Access Web Apps looks at all fields in your table, not just what's in the navigation search, um, whereas this searches everything, just the three fields that you have in the navigation area. Um, and so I can click on the arrow. I can get here to the to the view only. Um, I can edit this by clicking on the pencil, and now I can edit this this data. And so it you, you can do things like that. So that's how that's how the emulator works here. Um, one thing to point out here, the, you see there's a big X here, and then you got this. You never want to close the tab. You just want to close this this big X, which is the pre. You want to close out of the preview window. If you hit the X up here, you're closing out of the uh, of the app itself. Now it does say, "Are you sure you want to uh, leave the screen?" And you can say no, but just something to um, to kind of point out. Make sure you do. Um, so so this it puts together a really simple, like I said, a very simple. Uh, Power app for you, and so this is the first uh, little screen that it has, um, and similar to working with um, Access and Access Web Apps, you can click on these different parts, like address line one. You can click on the fields, and each of these fields they call it a card. So this is a card of the label and the field. So you can see these little cards. Um, you can um, let's see, and and when when you click on those, you'll see that if if I click once, it clicks the card, and then if I click like on a craw here, um, it it's clicking on the text field itself, um, and and then you'll be able to on the right hand side be able to you can show or turn things off or you know change. Uh, change some of that information off to the right. You can change the order that they they appear. You know all all of that kind of fun stuff. So um, again, this this first one is like a search or filter form. This second one is a view form, which is a just kind of a single record view where people can't edit it. When people click on the pencil, um, it uh, changes to this third view, which is an edit, edit only mode. Now, um, when the last time I created uh, an app, what I found is that if I edited the um, the view form, you could potentially put these in the wrong order that the edit form is on, and so you have to be very careful of that. You want you want your the, the fields to be very comfortable, very comfortable for the end user, so that they're in the in the correct order that that the first one is. So, if I deleted address line two here, um, if I got rid of this, I would want to make sure that in the edit one, I also got rid of it, um, and that way these these fields match because you don't want them again. You don't want to have them different. There are some there are some specific cases where you might have um, you might edit something that's not necessarily on one, but if adding an extra field is fine, just um, um, I you know just just be cautious of that because um, uh, again it's all it's all about the not just the UI the user interface but also the user UX which is uh, user experience. You want them to have a good experience with it. Um, all right, cool. So, as also as part of the tour, tour, I want to show you some things that kind of separate um, Power Apps from Access Web Apps. And so, there are a lot, you, you, it, when you think of your phone and what you can do with your phone, um, there are a lot of features that you have on smartphones that you don't necessarily have with um, an Access Web App. So, under um, Insert, for instance. If I go into uh, text, you'll see here you've got pen input. So that would be great for something like um, if you're selling something to someone and you want them to, to sign for it, or you've got some kind of a, a um, and it, 
I know I'm showing this in a, in a phone in a um, phone view, but you could have a tablet view as well. So you have a, a document that you want them to, to sign off on. You can do thing, things like that. So um, again, you you use a stylus on your phone or your finger on your phone, and you can do you can do things like that. Um, other things like under controls, you've got some some nice little things. Um, my my favorite ones are um, you've got this slider. Um, you, you've probably all seen rate, uh, ratings if you've downloaded um, uh, apps from the Apple Store. They always want you to rate to rate those, or even in in the four Alexa uh, apps I, uh, skills I created, um, you want to to rate those. You've got a timer event. Um, you've got a PDF viewer, so you've got some some really cool things there. Um, also under media. You've got a bunch of different choices too. You've got things like your camera, so you can access the camera on your phone. Um, you've got uh, a barcode, the ability to add a, add a barcode to it. Um, you can add video, you can do audio, you can um, record um, stuff on the microphone, so you can um, kind of use it as a dictation device or if you're um, you know on site vis visiting a customer and now you're leaving and you just want in, instead of typing in the text um, you just want to record a, a voice memo you can do something something like that with with a microphone so you can do some um, really cool things uh, that way as well um, and I you know I, I would encourage you to do some of these things one one of the apps that I'm planning on creating there's a Grand Rapids, um, uh, here, I, I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and there's um, Grand Rapids uh, Catholic cemeteries. And with, with them, they have, um, I think, like a dozen um, cemeteries. And so one of the things that we want to be able to do is have the ability to um, allow people that are visiting the cemetery to kind of find out where their loved one's graves are or to be able to search. And so one of the things that we're um, going to build is having a the using the camera in the phone so that when you take a pic, you, you can take a picture of that gravestone um, and it will automatically record the latitude longitude of where you're taking that picture. Um, you can have that stored in in your database, um, and uh, you know, and then you can link that picture of the um, of the gravestone with the actual record in the database, so that they can uh, end users in the future, like, or you can even build a web portal or whatever for it. But um, end users will be able to go to like maybe the the cemeteries. Home, you know, web page, um, and be able to click, you know, to search for loved one. They type in, you know, Tabus, you know, and it, it narrows it down. And when they click on it, they'll be able to see a picture of the headstone. They'll be able to see of how to how to get to that because some of these cemeteries are are huge, and you want to give them the ability to to find it uh, easily. You can also attach. Um, at that point, you can attach pictures. Um, of the loved one, you can um, even have your obituary, uh, you know, do things like that. So you you can because this data is stored within SharePoint. Now I can build a web portal that's also connected to that data in SharePoint, um, and you know, in order to you know expand the you know the reach of of what I'm trying you know trying to do. Um, and that's why I say, you know, for the when you know, I would encourage people as they're using Power Apps for the, for the first time, start with extending. Look, look at your current data that you're working with, whether that data is stored in um, Excel or if it's stored in SharePoint or Azure or whatever. But start there. Look at look at the data that you currently have, and and determine for yourself, you know. For for the people that are out in the field, um, what what would provide the best capabilities for them? What can we give them to, you know, find easily using u using their Power App, and how you know how can we how can we build that to, to fit? 
So um, I know I've been going on for a long time, so I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, you know, what? Do, do, does anybody have any questions about what I've shown, or um, is there something more that I can I, that I kind of went through quickly that you'd like to see more about? Check the chat window here. I know this is very new to to a lot of people. Um, so. Good. I see George joined us. Welcome, George. Howdy. Sorry I didn't get your message until late. Glad to see you got it going. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Sorry about that. Okay. I know some of, the, some of the common questions that I will get is are things like, do you have the ability to connect to multiple data sources in the same Power App? And you can. You, um, you can have both the customer table and um, maybe in this case it's a cylinders. What, so um, this, this customer of mine, um, Air Liquid Ghana, what they do is they um, have cylinders. They um, almost look like kegs, these um, silver cylinders of different um, gases or liquids that they sell to clients. Um, in some cases, they are kind of leasing, you know, they're just um, uh, kind of like when you go uh, and pick up a, a, a um, gas a grill cylinder, you know, um, you go and you, you pick that up and some people return the empty one and they just pick up a different one that's already pre-filled. Um, so you can do things like that where you're, um, where Air Liquid Ghana actually owns that cylinder and and in, in our case what they do is they return that cylinder and then they have to go through a process of the cylinder gets returned, um, they measure it to make sure there's, you know, see if there's any liquid remaining. Um, and then they have to go through a, a thorough testing process, make sure there are no leaks, that kind of stuff. Um, also, obviously, you can in some in you can't have gas in there, and then you add um, you know water for people to drink, you know, from. You can't have those kind of things in the same can, cylinder. So if you do that, and then. They, um, after the testing, they fill it up with liquid that goes back to their warehouse, and then the next person can buy it. So they've got, they have to track cylinders that way. But they also, uh, they have cases where the um, end user or the end co customer has purchased those cylinders themselves. That so they they own those cylinders, and so when Air Liquid Ghana goes and picks up that cylinder, they have to make sure that that gets returned back to that client. Um, and so you've got the you'll have the ability to to track those kind of things as well. And obviously, the you know the um, the uh, Access Web App can can do other things, but those were the kind of the things that um, Ben and I, uh, Ben Clothier and I, were using to kind of mimic to uh, to give demonstrations on. Yeah. The, um, so one of the one of the things that w when I look at the way Power Apps is designed, um, I I kind of mesh it between um, PowerPoint and Excel because in terms of the layout properties, for me it gives a real feeling like you're working with like a a, a PowerPoint layout. Um, you know the way the the way that those uh, work, um, but it, when you're when you look at things like the properties or these formulas, this is very much like um, Excel, and so when you're 
when you're working with this, um, there are no uh, macros built into it. Um, one of the things um, Julian alluded to before is there's what's called Microsoft Flow, which allows you to create those kind of workflow type of things. Like um, you can set up a Microsoft Flow so that if somebody adds a record to um, the SharePoint list that you are sent an email um, notification that, that something was added, but you can also build in that only send me that email if I'm not the one that entered the record. So you can set up a flow to do things like that. Um, the cool thing about flows is that you can um, create a flow one time and then you can use that flow within different uh, power apps. So, um, so that's you know that's a pretty nice feature. Um, the other thing that people have um, kind of stumbled into when they first first get into it is that there is. I mean, I'm going back to the main uh, portion here, um, so you can see we can go to uh, flows uh, directly here, and just for kicks, I'm going to do click on new here. Um, here, I'm just going to click on this one again. Do I still? I remember my SharePoint site. Actually, I can get to it this way. So you can, so from here, uh, you, you've got your you've got your apps, you've got your connections, you get your flows and your um, and your gateways. Uh, well, I haven't even played with gateways, but down here is called the common data service. Um, and so when um, that kind of question comes up, is what is a common data service and and how is that utilized and the. The, the best way that I have to explain what that is, is let's say you are um, someone, you know, using Julian, Julian has created uh, an HR um, app for um, Access Web Apps, which is really incredible. Um, and in, uh, but let's say, and actually one of the examples that Microsoft uses is that um, on uh, every year when they have a, um, Microsoft, Microsoft encourages their team to get um, checkups, um, and when that occurs, they can get something like either a coffee mug, or they can have like a $25 donation um, to um, a charity of their choice, or they can do different things like that. Now, but when you're connecting, if you were to connect to the, um, if you were to connect to, and I hear George. I'm going to mute him here so we don't uh, hear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I muted George so he didn't have to listen to his uh, conversation. Um, and so, so with that, you don't want to connect to the whole um, HR data. You don't want your other employees to be able to see things that are part of the hospital database or the you know, um, you know, Obamacare database. You, you you can't have those kind of connections, and so the common data model allows you to filter that data into like a temporary storage. So all you have is like the uh, individual's um, ID number, not their social security number, but they're just like an ID number, and then maybe the the last date of their checkup. So. Um, it doesn't fall within, you know, the last 11 months. Um, but so it allows you to have this um, filtered subset of that data um, as, you know, under the common data model, and then you just connect to that smaller, that smaller piece of it. Um, and not only is that um, more secure because you're not opening up access to all of this healthcare data, um, but it's also much faster because you're only looking at a tiny subset of all the data instead of seeing all of the Azure tables and everything else that goes along with it. And so um, it's uh, flows and um, 
the common data model are something we're going to get into, but it's it's probably going to be um, pr probably not within the next uh, you know five five or six uh, sessions that we have. So if anybody has any um, questions that they want to put post in chat, or if you want to speak up and have something, you know, please, please let me know. I know we've, we're we're bumping up against. Um, two o'clock Eastern time. And while, you know, um, there are, so some of the sessions that we're looking at doing in the future is being able to co connect to multiple data sources. And if you connect, like I, like I mentioned, if you connect from um, the customer record to a, the cylinders record, how do you, how do you move from one to another? Um, we also want to have sessions on uh, building formulas. I think that that's um, extremely important uh, for you know what we're doing here with Power Apps. So you know we definitely want to have we definitely want to have um, things on on formulas. Um, there's also um, the different actions uh, that that you can do um, uh, within it. Again, there's there's no uh, macros. There are no macros, so you have to think about a different way of, of going about doing doing um, some of that. Um, you also have different layouts and some some things that we can get into there. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat window, so I'm going to um, one kind of. Um, one, one kind of thing to leave you with in here is that if I go in, I'm going to go back into my app here. I'm going to go ahead and load this one. This is a simple one I created for Air Liquid Ghana. And again, this is kind of a test test one. They are not using this power app at, you know, at all. Um, it's just something that we, it, it was a, uh, a good example to kind of, sh um, for Ben and I to kind of show the capabilities of Power Apps. Oh, now this is great. Uh, sorry, something went wrong. <laughs> so, uh, well, welcome to um, the beginning of, uh, you know, of, of, of starting something, starting something new. Let's see if we can jump back to it a different way. So, I'll, I'll go into it this way. So, under App Settings, um, you've got the ability to name name your what your app is. You've got the ability to change your icons, which are over here. So I can choose um, a star. There's different ones you can have. You can browse for a file, but you can choose um, a different icon for what you're doing. You can choose background colors, put in the description. Um, and this is the thing that I wanted to kind of point out. This is a screen size and orientation. And so in here, you've got you can choose whether de the default is portrait or landscape. And more importantly, down here, there's what's called lock orientation. If, if lock orientation is on, that means the user, even if they tilt their phone to port, you know, from landscape back to portrait, it's, it's not going to um, change the orientation. So you can only view it landscape. So if, um, if you want to be able to see it resize that be with the responsive technology that's built in, um, then you definitely want to turn this off, turn the um, orientation off uh, in order to allow that to do that. So that's another common common mistake that people people have. So well, good. Well, we're bumping like I said, we're we're bumping up um, against two o'clock. So if um, if anybody has any questions. I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, my email address here. Um, Andy at WorksmartDB.com. Uh, so you can do that. If you want to find me on uh, LinkedIn, slash individual, slash Andy Tabus. Um, Wisdom. Um, the, and the reason why I do that is the company is Work Smart Database Masters. So 
phonetically it's wisdom. Yeah, and good. Well, I appreciate um, I appreciate everyone uh, joining us, and um, you know we we look forward to having you join uh, other sessions in the future. So thanks again.